would like to introduce the SI President's Appeal, Women, Water and Leadership, which is actively implementing all the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, and projects that seek to support the development and evaluation of change within these areas. So the, the project focuses on access to water, energy, food and sanitation, if I would mention the numbers of the Sustainable Development Goals, that would be two, five, six, and seven. Sustainable production and consumption, health and well-being, that's 11, 12, and 13, and of course also five. Women in environmental decision-making at all levels in the water sector, which is four, five, six, eight, and 10. And finances, which is number 17, for sustainable development is needed for all these SDGs. One of the things that climate change has done is to disturb in a major way our ability to measure what is normal anymore and what is average anymore. And so this is unprecedented because of the enormity of the scientific infrastructure that has to go into recording, observing, recording, um, analyzing and interpreting um, these enormous uh, data sets that are involved in understanding these issues. Um, this is um, statewide impact. We have on the top the California drought from 2012 to 2016. Look at that. The most severe in the last 1,200 years. The Earth's climate is changing faster than it ever has in history. Uh, the changes are due to um, human activity, as scientists have determined, and we know that the impact of climate change is already being felt within our own communities and throughout the world. There are things going on, um, even though sometimes the government doesn't seem to be accountable to us. In local communities, and I know you do a lot in California, in local communities we're working to make a difference. But hopefully we're not um, doing too little too late. Uh, one of the things that I try and get across to kids is that the way indigenous people all around the world look at the environment is much different than Western science. Western science, you have a rock, you have an animal, so you categorize it, you photograph it, you measure it, you study it um, for its physical properties. Indigenous people, on the other hand, have this notion that uh, the environment is part of us. So when I'm talking to third graders or fourth graders, I talk about Yoda, because um, you know Yoda is knows everything, number one. Number two, Yoda knows that there's a spirit in everything or a force in everything. And indigenous belief is somewhat similar in that there is a force in everything. And the, the key point on the side is that everything is equal. So people are not more important than the environment. They're equal to. So that changes your mindset when you go out and, and look in, in a, take a walk in a forest take a, a walk along a stream, or, or so forth. All those plants, animals, water, air, so forth, those are equal in importance to us as humans. So because they're equal, we need to remember that we need to treat them with respect. I was invited to be on the board of, the national board of Environmental Defense Fund. And at those board meetings, I started learning about what humans were doing to the planet, whether it was overfishing, deforestation, lead in gasoline, antibiotics in our poultry that we were then eating, and all the really awful things that humans were doing to God's creation. The sacredness that I'm glad Nick talked about because the Episcopal Church believes that too, that everything that God created is sacred. So what was struggled in, inside of me is how we people calling ourselves Christians could sit in a, in a church and say we love God, love creation, and love each other, and then sit back and let this incredible, natural, beautiful creation be destroyed. We can do every one of us a smaller action to preserve environment. We can 
teach the children and what our children, our boys, girls, how to preserve water, how to preserve electricity. Uh, this smaller action can change the world.